Hey fellow busy professional, welcome back. Today we will dive into the three tools that I love. It's Haptabase, Miro and ClickUp. And in this video, I want to share how they are placed on my productivity system getting the big picture. And then we will zoom in a bit to look into each tool individually to show you examples inside those tools that I use them for. So for example, the Hepta base, I will show you how I actually planned out the strategy of this channel. In Miro, I will show you a work stream that I created back in the times when I launched the Paperless Movement. And in ClickUp, I will show you an overview of the content production machine that we have established in there. So without further ado, let's dive into this. I think to best understand this is going to the website and open up the tools we use. And here you will find the ICO framework where we laid out the tools that we use. And you see, there are a lot more than the three tools that I talk about on this channel, right? But we find those three tools. We have Haptabase here, we have ClickUp here, and we have Miro here. And now let's quickly talk about what this all is, right? It might look confusing, but it's much simpler to understand because what you have here, it's called the ICO framework that represents a professional's productivity system end to end. So we have the personal knowledge management area. That's this circle here. And you see Heptabase is placed in this personal knowledge management area. Then we have the business project management area here. And you see, ClickUp is inside this circle. And we have the business knowledge management area, which is here. And there you see there's also ClickUp. So this overlap of these two represents that we use ClickUp for both these areas of our productivity system. And then you also see in this business knowledge management circle, there is Miro. What is not covered is the personal project management area, the task management area. And there I'm using Todoist, we are using Sansama to plan out the things. But no worries, on this channel I will talk a lot about ClickUp and how I ensure that I get the tasks done that we are using. And then you see these tools appearing where I explain to you how I use them in combination with ClickUp. But the core is really to have ClickUp as our main project management tool. And it's all about removing any obstacles and confusions. And that's why we really focus just on ClickUp, Miro and have the base on this channel. But it gives you the overview. There's more behind this and we all use a combination of tools that is not just these three tools. There are also people who think they would use just one tool, but in the end, everybody uses more. It starts with an email client. It's the browser that you're using. Many things that come into play to this. But if you want to learn more about this, there's a video on the other channel where we dive into tool agnostic concepts and workflows of a busy professionals productivity. And I link this in the description below if you're interested to learn more about how the whole map and all these works. It was just to bring this up and to show you where these three tools that we talk about on this channel are actually positioned. So the, the big difference we need to understand between personal knowledge management and business knowledge management. In the personal knowledge management, the tools I have placed here, I'm only using for my personal knowledge. I'm not sharing this with anybody. I mean, I'm sharing the refined content out of my thoughts that I have in this tool, but I'm not letting people into my brain in the process of thinking about things. And that's why I'm also not a fan of the collaboration features that Heptabase is now adding here because I cannot see this work. Therefore, we have the business knowledge management, which would be the Miro maps that we create for the whole team to understand or the ClickUp knowledge management documents and all the things that we provide to the team. So we have the right spaces for the people to go to, adding them to my system in Heptabase that might be too messy. Now you also see that Tana and Reader. So I'm using Reader in addition to Heptabase, but this is just to please my FOMO, my fear of missing out. So when I come across anything that I don't want to move into my Heptabase, which is essentially my deep thinking system, I can place it here and I can call it a day. Tana, on the other hand, I'm no longer using Tana. Paco is heavily using Tana, probably more than he uses Heptabase. That's why I'm not talking about Tana because Heptabase is more than enough for me, for all the things that I need to do on a daily basis. So now let's zoom into Heptabase and let's see how I went through the strategy planning the past weeks for the main channel, but also for this tool specific channel. Now here we are inside my Heptabase and here you see there is on the main map just one whiteboard called my life. And when we go in here, we have the three 
buckets, the my projects, key elements, and my topics. And if you want to learn more about this, this is part of the capturing bees that we teach with our ICO methodology that helps you to streamline things. I will refer back to this concept more and more because this is how I structured Heptabase. But all you need to know now, I'm using these three buckets. And if I go to my projects, you will find here YouTube strategy 2025 and some private things as well. But let's focus on this one. When I click here, now you see all the work that I've done in the past weeks. This is thinking about my main channel on YouTube, where I had always a combination of two specific videos with tool agnostic videos. And if you follow me on this channel, you might have recognized that I talked a lot more about tool agnostic things. And people who subscribe to this channel for the tool videos that I did previously were no longer served with the videos they were expecting for. And that's why I launched this second channel now. Then as you can see, that's real time because if we zoom into the new channel strategy here, and it doesn't need to look fancy because it's just me, that's my personal knowledge management. I'm the only one who needs to understand what is going on here. Here you see exactly what I planned out. Maybe you come from the channel trailer because that was the plan to hand over you into the next video. And you can expect in the end of the video that I will give you a call to action that you might uh, be interested to watch this video next, where we talk about Heptabase, Miro and ClickUp that all of them have whiteboards and uh, how they compare to each other. And here you see the future of the channel. This is the first layout that might change, you know, it's not, not nothing is set in stone, but by colors I indicated quickly the things that I'm currently working on. And the red ones are something that came to mind, but I think has a great potential to talk about. If you see anything that you really like to see next of these red things, stop the video, have a look, go to the comments below and let me know. This channel is all about growing together and really the deliver what you're looking for. Let's open up this in the side and that's what we are currently in here. And here, for example, there are just a few notes that I have taken down for this video. But in this one, we have, for example, a full script that I created. So the thing is, how do I convert this now into this video that you're watching right now? Here, this is my personal thought or process about what content I will do, what's the structure of the video and so on. But then it goes into ClickUp where I actually plan out the videos. That's something that is well established already due to my other channel that I'm running, but also the podcast channel I have together with Paco and the articles that Paco is publishing. All this is inside ClickUp and let's have a look how this looks like. So here we are inside ClickUp and here we have the YouTube tool videos. This is our ClickUp structure and I will make a dedicated video to talk about how we structure ClickUp as much as I will do a Heptabase video, how I structure Heptabase. I think that's a good idea. Let's actually go back to Heptabase and let's add this. Okay. I just double click and I say how to structure Heptabase, structure ClickUp. And that's it. I will close this for now because I think the title says a lot and I know exactly what this is about. Um, but if I would need to add more content, so I just hold down option and double click, it opens up on the side panel and I can make it quick note, say capturing beast concept. And that's something that will help you a lot. But for ClickUp as well, execution beast, that's more than enough. I make these red because I planned out to do these and then I will think about what to do next. When I go now back to ClickUp, here we are in the YouTube tool videos and here you see there are the videos that are planned out. So how do I keep the things connected? Well, the moment I finished thinking about the video, I add just a link to that card into the video script custom field. We open up the channel trailer here. You see the custom fields coming up here. And here we go. That's just a link to my Heptabase to this card. So when I click there with one click of a button and then it opens up directly this card so I can directly use this context to start the video. Obviously, your team cannot read this. If you would now start collaborating or you should openly share this card, then obviously you can add this and even the team could open up. We worked with two different video editing companies in 2024 for a whole year. And I still was able to just use this work stream. And I show you in the main videos where we see here, there are all the videos that we published on the main channel. And here you see it was the vid pros 
and it was the Be Creatives. These are the two video editing companies that we've been working with. And instead of getting the video editors in here and train them on ClickUp and all the things, I kept just using their project management tool instead because they have a whole request system, they have a commenting system and all the things. If I get the people in here, that would, be in, have, would have been a mess, not only training them in here, I, we would have needed to pay them as well and all the things. That's why we have an external project custom field here and this means the moment it's switched here into the editing mode and again let me know in the comments below if you want to learn more about the setup that I have here in this work stream the moment it get, went into editing I knew it is on this external platform and then with a click of a button just one click and it would open up exactly this request so this means I always had a single source of truth here the starting point and if I needed anything related to this like the edits and the commenting and things like that I was just one click away to go directly to the context and this applies to everything that we do in ClickUp so here for example the project folder is just a link directly to the folder on Dropbox that brings me directly to the recording. So if there is any video that I want to redo or leverage for social media or whatever, there's just one click, boom, it opens up the relevant folder with all the content. This work stream is fully automated. The moment this goes to published, it will actually have an automation using Sabia and then it will publish it into Airtable and from Airtable it goes into WordPress on my own website as a blog post and it gets published inside our community too all on autopilot without me doing anything and that's not something you do on day one and that's where Miro comes into play. So let's go to Miro and I'll show you a specific work stream that I established inside Miro to show you exactly when I'm using Miro. So here we are in Miro and uh, this is one of the work streams that we had back in the time with my team. So I started the paperless movement on my own. I had a lot of automations going on because I was working 10 to 13 hours a day in my corporate job. But in addition, I started the paperless movement as a side hustle back in 2018. Over time, I established these work streams and that's exactly what you learn inside the paperless movement membership. If you're interested in the iCode journey, there's the automation like a pro course. There you learn exactly how to lay out these work streams. But I show you now here how I use Miro in order to establish these so you get the point. I went through this myself. So I created a community event post. I did the interview. I did the editing. I created the social media snippets. I created blog posts, created social media posts, and then scheduled all the things and blog posts published. The thing is, I hated the whole process, man. It was so many things to do and lengthy that it was holding me back creating other type of videos on the YouTube channel and I was just too invested into this work stream too much. That's why the next step was then to put it on the swim lanes here and make a decision. What of the things is that I want to do and what I don't want to do? And as you can see here, the only thing I wanted to do is to do the interview because I was the only person having the knowledge to talk to the top CEOs of all the different tool companies I interviewed back then. I think it was 50 interviews that we did. So I put it here and I said, okay, the only thing I want to do is this. How can I make it work that other people or automations can take over all the other steps? So now I'm forcing myself to find solutions. And obviously there was a lot of moving up and down and thinking about how to do this. I think we did 40 of these interviews afterwards and the first 10 I did this way right everybody was perfectly aligned it was hands off and then one step further there was the work stream tool stack you see when we zoom out not only for me but for the whole team it became crystal clear who needs to do what if there was any discussions or anything like that or confusions this was the map to go to because now it was crystal clear and you might have recognized already these click up icons here so again here's the connection to the work stream because when you click there it opened up click up and it went directly to the sop to the standard operating procedure that is relevant for this process and that's how you can have the bird's eye view on everything but at the same time zoom in very quickly and now the next step was and that's still the process for all the work streams that we do go into the project management tool in this case click up and establish the work streams in there because now all we need to do having a list where we go through different stages of the task and when we go back now to the YouTube work stream you see exactly this here these are the different process steps and each individual step has a specific standard operating procedure so that's how we leverage Miro most 
in order to create these work streams and get these overviews and everybody is on the same page. But once you're in here, it's just a list of tasks you're working in. And if you always try to do everything here in the first place without getting this bird's eye view, that's the moment where the team gets confused. Maybe there's a lot of back and forth. The setup in the first place might be wrong from the ground up. And many things that you can kill before even starting to work with the team inside ClickUp. So now that you saw these three tools, you might wonder, hey, Tom, we have also whiteboards inside ClickUp, as you can see here. So what about those? Well, let's find out in the next video here where I will compare the three whiteboards with each other and show you exactly why I prefer one over the other.